welcome to the Managing the Smart Mind podcast with your host, Coach Kramer. This is episode 60, Dreaming Big versus Opening Up to Infinitely Exciting Possibilities. Hey, smart human. Today I'm diving into a coaching concept, which I think we need to redefine, and that is dreaming big. Now, first of all, one of the best things other people can say to me is something like, well, that's never going to work, or you'll never achieve that. To me, (laughs) that's like the best incentive ever to do it anyway, right? And maybe you're the same, and you've created some pretty fun stuff because other people didn't believe in you and sort of undervalued or discounted your dreams. So that works, right? But we do not want to rely on the naysayers when it comes to building a beautiful life. And without them, we tend to play small, to stay kind of underneath our own glass ceiling. You know, or that, you know, that image of the tiger that lived in the cage and then they built like a bigger, um, a kind of bigger area for him in the zoo, took the cage away or took him out of the cage and he just kept constraining himself to the small cage area because that's where he was supposed to be according to his brain, right? So your brain does the same, my brain does the same. And we, you know, get to have much more fun than that. First of all, why does this happen? Well, we can't really see what is beyond that cage or that glass ceiling, what infinite number of things are also possible for us. We don't even take the time usually to think about it. And in addition, there's a lot of inner chatter interfering with and also blocking our true desires. For example, the moment we start thinking something like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I became the face of the next Dior campaign or if the government gave me a 10 million stipendium to create awareness around giftedness, or if I got invited to teach a creativity workshop at this really cool company in Kyoto, right? All expenses paid. Then our brain immediately shuts down that train of thought because it thinks it needs to protect us from disappointment, ridicule, disapproval, right? Because it thinks that if we feel that, It's going to be horrible and we may die. But that's all it is, really. Right? And here's the secret. Once you're actually willing to risk disappointment, ridicule, or disapproval, and by the way, the disapproval you get for free, (laughs) it's going to be there pretty much regardless of what you do, whether you take risks in life or not. Some people are going to disapprove you. Just deal with it already. But once you're willing to open up to the others, you can start to have the most amazing, crazy, fun life, doing things you can't even conceive of right now. Which brings me to the concept of dreaming big. Now, this is a concept many coaches use to get you into a dreaming thinking space outside your own relatively small norm, right? That cage, which in itself is a great idea, right? Dream big, dream bigger, dream bolder. But... When someone tells me to dream big or dream bigger, it doesn't work for me at all. When someone says, dream big, I have this knee-jerk reaction of dreaming up skyscrapers and fast cars and helmet Newton women and endless sunny days. It's a weird mashup of Miami Vice and Wolf of Wall Street and a bunch of other movies which have nestled in my brain under the umbrella concept of making it big, but which have literally nothing to do with what I personally aspire to or enjoy doing. So dreaming big or trying to dream big doesn't work for me. It just conjures up this Hollywood approved cardboard version of reality, which by the way also involves lots of people oppressing other people. (laughs) So not a lot of fun. So what does work when it comes to moving beyond what your brain currently misguidedly thinks is possible? Well, dreaming courageously, adventurously, and sensuously. Using your entire body to feel into your dreams. 
to sample them, right? To step into them, live into them, experience what they feel like without shutting them down because your brain can't believe they could come true. That's dreaming adventurously and sensuously. And the courageous part, that is feeling your nudges and allowing them. Maybe the first thing that comes up when you're daydreaming of how your life could be even more fun Maybe it's an image of you baking sourdough bread when you were actually expecting to see yourself in a glamorous office or on stage in front of thousands of people. So when that happens, you want to be courageous, not judge yourself, but see it through. Stay with it. If you see sourdough bread in your future, run with it. If you see (laughs) goats or I don't know, alpine mountains, whatever it is, just run with it. Get curious. What about this is appealing to me? What is my subconscious telling me, right? Do I maybe long for more touch, for the joy of making? Do I want to find ways of nourishing other people? Just get super curious. And once you figure that out, then ask, can I get some more of that into my current life? Now, you also want to be courageous enough not to fall into the guilt trap. Guilt about being capable of so much, being so smart and talented, maybe even about already having so much, and then wanting even more. How dare you desire more, right? Let it go. This guilt is a complete waste of time. The desire for an even better life than you currently have does not make you a bad person. It also doesn't make you a a sort of ungrateful, unappreciative person. It is just a feeling in your body. There's no need to feel guilty about it. It's not useful either. Now, how you go about fulfilling your desire is a different issue, right? (laughs) Maybe morality comes into that. We can talk about that some other time. But wanting something is neither good nor evil, right? It's an, an emotional reaction in your physical body. So instead of either shutting yourself down, censoring yourself, or defaulting into guilt, I want you to drop into the dream. What does it feel like to want this thing? To want this experience? To want this kind of life? And what does this desire teach you? How can you start answering its call in small ways? Starting today. Listen. Really listen. Lean into the feeling and start playing with it through small, doable actions. And then see (laughs) what infinite possibilities start unfolding as your brain opens up to all the things that are possible for you. Have a fabulous week. Bye-bye.